Okay, so uh, thanks to CBDD colleagues for inviting me to co-share in this workshop. Uh, let me just take away this thing. Okay, so okay, um, because there's there's uh, I think that the main purpose of, of getting me here is to talk about uh this this particular simulation. Uh, there has this pedagogical move uh, that uh, simulation typically do not have la. So uh, I just want to share about it uh, then after that we will link it back with the etd uh, e pedagogy framework because the cbd clearly asked me to make reference to the to the framework la. Oh, so okay the the url i'm just going to place it here for you Let's see i've pasted it already oh okay thanks yeah, yeah so I have too many things on my screen like, hang on huh? Okay, so in this particular uh, simulation, uh, to use it in SLS, you just click download model and then you can, you can upload it as a SLS uh, media and then it will automatically run. Okay, so to show you the pedagogy that we were talking about, because there's uh, some emphasis on using uh, e-pedagogy. So I, let me just remove this thing here. Okay, so you can see that this, uh, so, I mean, basically, you can see that this, this simulation has been uh, supposedly well designed. Uh, because, because you, you see, if there's is a slider here, you can see the, the mess here. Then there's a test mess. So everything is matched one for one. So initially, when I did this with uh, Yishun Junior College, they, they wanted this kind of a setup because they wanted students to do uh, the G field. Okay, so the G field, once you activate the G field, then you can use this slider to see the G view. So I plotted it in dotted line to show the student that this is the gravitational field strength of this particular uh, M1. Uh, oh. Then if you can drag this, you can see that this uh, actually also shows uh, um, a G value with the arrow because YJC, they use this to scaffold the learning for student. And then eventually if you get to play, uh, you know, you can tell your student to predict what will happen, and then if you play, oh, sorry, did something mess up? Let me just play again. Oh, okay, I think there's a bug. I, I need to I need to check what's wrong. Uh, give me give me a couple of days to look into it. But it's supposed to let me just see. Uh, it's supposed to gravitate towards it and then stop there, lah. Oh, I think maybe I mess up by changing something and then uh, it didn't uh, move correctly. Okay, so this is uh, in addition to uh easy to use slider you can see the color coding and, and uh, eventually we will get the student to show both sides of the gravitational field strength okay and then they can uh, drag this to see what is the effect of what they are doing uh. so if they arbitrarily try to do it you can tell the student to do balancing neutral point then they will have to realize that we be careful in a proper SLS lesson we can get them to decide, uh, maybe say at this particular point where the G resultant is uh, zero. Then when they click play in theory, it's supposed to stay there. Uh, of course, it will move a bit because of the minute, the, the inability to, to precisely place it at the zero G fuel, uh, net G fuel position. But if I were to reset it, let me move it to 500, 500. That smack right at the center, it should not move. Uh, uh. I, I'm just going to remove the, the different G field so that you can see the effects of what I'm saying. So the, this thing should not move at all. Uh. Oh, okay, so this is one thing. So in addition to having made a uh, simulation for the past 15 years for, for MOE colleagues, uh, I also collaborate with a lot, a lot of people. Uh. So I just want to say that um, while working on working with people, then there was one fine day, Jimmy asked me, uh, Jimmy from YJC. So we, we did some discussion. So we were thinking, how can we relate this? Uh? So in addition to making the scene very nice and, and very intuitive to use, and then we can visualize all these nice things. We, we thought that, that there should be something more, uh, you know, which is what we call as a uh, pedagogy. Uh. So the, the way we envision this to link it with uh, equation is we click on this button called show model okay 
And then you can see that in this particular model, uh, we already preset because when I tried this with students, the, the feedback I, I got from teachers was, this is too difficult. Lah. So we, we, we made a selectable uh, combo box. So you can now select predefined models to select and then see whether this model matches the, the, uh, the net G field uh, plot. Lah. This is the net G field, the, the, the in gray, uh, brown color. So when you change your model, you can see that the model um, will, will do certain things. And then we will tell the student whether this model is a close fit to this, uh, to this gray thing that is, is done by the simulation. So um, in addition to making, so, so the, the easy way, first we tell students to, to draw a model, which is the equation. Uh, so it's zero, so it's a zero line. So if let's say you want student to do fine tuning, because we also don't want the student Okay, let me just show you the, the various possibility. La. So I computed the theoretical value for these G values, la, G1, G2, and G net. La. So you can actually draw and then it will show you the, the theoretical value for the G for M1. It can show the theoretical for G2 and then it can so, show the resultant. Okay, but because we, we wanted to uh, scaffold because uh, because we are dealing with students who are not very, uh, we, we just want to make learning as painless as possible. So we can actually get students. So you double, you click on this again, it toggles into an input field. So a little bit like Python or Mathematica, you can start to do your sign R, you know, and then you will do the sign R. So can, can someone suggest to me, how can I make this a little bit bigger? So that the lesson is more interactive. I'm sure as most of us should have no difficulty. La. You need a, a constant somewhere, right? So what can I key in? Times 20. Times 20, excellent, Darren. So it times 20 becomes another, you know, so that this is actually like uh, like your typical programming. This is actually JavaScript. La. So the JavaScript actually takes in the language and is able to pass this into equations. La. So building on this, we decided that you know, students should be able to do simple model like this. Okay. So they can type in this capital G because it already has it already has a factor for you, then followed by M1, then divided by R squared. So you can see that this actually shows the this actually shows the, the model that the student and plot. So you can tell the student, hey, but this this mass is here. But this equation is, is what you know in theory. You know? So it doesn't quite link up because it is, it is showing the G field as if it is the mass is here. So eventually you can scaffold a student to subtract a constant. Am I, am, I, am I making sense? So the constant you can see from all this value is minus 50. It's not a bit hard. La. I just scaffold la, minus 50. So I can see the graph actually, I mean, just minus 40 further. You can see that by changing these values, uh, the student can see the impact of their model building. So you can see that this actually is the model that matches this side of the, the equation for, for M1. Then you can also get student to uh, model for G2. Okay, G2. So I'm going to click on the show. So this is actually the underlying the, the coding underneath. Uh, which is the mathematics behind this uh, science model is actually uh, minus capital G M2 absolute R minus 50, R minus 50, then uh, square because it's the formula we learn, we teach them R square, right? So they need to use the mathematical thinking uh, to appropriate the constant called minus 50 because it is displaced by 50, okay? Then eventually, eventually we can ask them, so click on this again to show the, the full length. So it's actually the whole thing all computed together. So if let's say the students say, okay, never mind, I don't think this is 6.67, I think it's actually pi or something like that. Like they can propose their own, you know. Then you can see something is not quite right. 
the, the value pi is 3.14, it's not big enough, so it should be 6.67, okay? Then, okay, maybe I don't think it's 6.6, I think it's 7, oh, sorry, uh, 7. So the student can propose their own value and come to the idea that the match, while 7 is quite close, but actually the, the equation is 6.67 because that's the, the value that we want the student to, to remember at right? the capital G. Because bear in mind, we want to make the model building simple. So it already multiplies by 10 to the power of minus 11 for the student. So the student just need to write this long string of things to appreciate the, the model for the resultant G. So this is the, this is the pedagogy that we thought has a place. Uh, I did this with YJC and Innova JC, and I think River Valley also, uh, and VJC in 1916. I don't know, 2016. <laughs> while, uh, while I feel that there is a place in this model building, typically my sensing is yes, it's, it's not an uh, easy pedagogy to enact, but I believe if you can see the, the power of tracker, you can see the power of modeling in, let's say, other software. In fact, Darren also talked about Trinket. It's all writing code. I'm not writing, I'm okay, I'm writing code, but I don't get students to write code. Correct or not? I just get students to write equations. I mean, simple mathematics equation. I think for high ability students, it should be uh, a good way to excite them uh, because. Uh, Besides just playing with the simulation, I think that's the stronger students will appreciate what we are trying to do. And that's to make them think harder about the equation, linking their mathematics equation into physics. Okay. So that is the that is the one third of the talk that I want to give. <laughs> okay. Now uh, linking back to let me see where am I at? Okay, linking back to e-pedagogy. Uh, how how many of you have no e-pedagogy from I can't I can't see your screen but you all heard of e-pedagogy anyone e-pedagogy is a is, is a something from from public service I think there's some there's something that came out there after ETD uh, took hold of it and then we we made it in, into something that is alive in the SRS. Uh. So I just give you the short version now, uh, okay? The short version of e-pedagogy is, yeah, there's this info for skill future for educators and all. So the short version of e-pedagogy, let me just look quickly. Uh, uh, okay, it has four things. Okay, I really simplify it, uh, four things. First thing is uh, whether the, the that whether there is coherence in your lesson flow. Okay, I put it this way, it's core constructive alignment. Now. Okay, that means whether there is, you align your activity with your objective, with your assessment, okay? The second thing is it has learning experience. So because in CBDD, ETD, we all talk the same way, right? So, I mean, I don't want to go into the details, but there are different learning experiences, uh, but generally we just, Take it as one learning experience. Uh, that we, we, need to, we need to learn, we need to experience to truly appreciate what the teacher is talking about. Because if, if you tell me G feel this, that, then I cannot, I cannot grapple it, I cannot understand the concept, I cannot see the visualization, I cannot change the variable, I do not have any handle to understand. So I think this one is generally quite okay, uh, learning experience. Okay, so this is the second uh, component of e-pedagogy. The third component is active learning process because we don't want learners to be passive. So they must be actively constructing meaning. Okay. So there are all these various steps, which I also know. Well, not, I just give you the big picture huh? in the interest of uh, being clear and succinct. <laughs> okay. This one, clear application of technology. This one, you, okay. I, I talk to people. Some people seem to think that this is the way going forward. So I need to elaborate on a little bit on this. So assessment of learning is one of the key application of technology. Differentiation uh, is another key, uh, is another facet that we must be familiar with. La. Okay, so assessment of learning, how we can, we can do assessment of learning is simply just MCQ or in SLS is the ITT. Are you all familiar with all this acronym? 
ITT, in, interactive thinking tool. Uh. Later, I'll show you. This is called free response question. Okay. So differentiation, I know is difficult uh, because in SLS, you can do different pathing. So high ability, mid ability, low ability. But uh, if it's difficult, then just ignore it for the time being. But conceptually, uh, philosophically, we all believe that differentiation is good for teaching and learning. Ag agreed. Okay. Okay. So we later on, I'll show you an SLS lesson. You can see this all come alive. Uh. Conceptual change. This is where I believe a lot of the tracker simulations, a PhD stuff. These are these are very, very uh, good for conceptual change. What it means is there's this thing here. I will not show you the, this is just an animated GIF. Like. I will not show you the actual sim, but basically you can see very simple interface. One slider, one object, the light bounces and then can see thing. Then there's also a hint to tell the student to do productive not noticing. So this will tell you that this is what the supposed, this is what the student supposed to notice. This is where light cannot get through to the eye because it's being blocked. So all these are scaffolded explicitly. So very little chance because I designed this for primary school kids. Uh. So there's no chance for, for, for mistakes. Uh. There, there's no ambiguity. Uh. So we, we try to make it as clear as possible. Now, this is uh, something I did with uh, Bertrand. I, I didn't know he's going to be here. Uh. So I already included it here because when, when Bertrand was, was with me uh, for a short, I think 10 weeks or something, then he was in ETD. Then one thing led to another. Then he found out I can do things. So I shared with him how you can do a model of an aeroplane uh, flying backwards, uh, which at the end, then basically, we, basically what Bertrand did was he did the, 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 the tracking of the, the motion of the flight of the aeroplane. Then later on, he's, he added a layer of uh, what we call dynamic model. I believe it was a dynamic model. So the model matches the flight of the aeroplane, the, the, the children's aeroplane. But nevertheless, I believe Bertrand is here. He, he can tell you uh, the, the, the strength of the learning he has acquired, the concept. Everything comes along. He got to apply flight. You got to apply MG, you got to apply drag, you got to apply uh, uh, lift. Uh, I believe these are vaguely, these are the little things. I guess it, Bertrand was with me, I think five years back, is it? <laughs> I can't remember how long ago, but I, I had this even before Bertrand. I didn't know he's here, lah, so I, I'm just going to show it here. Okay, So I just tell you that there's, there's a lot of things that we can do with Tracker that is uh, powerful in model building. Lah. Okay. Scaffolding. So in simulation, typically we have all these numbers. So we, we make it clear to the student what we should be noticing because in a real uh, micrometer, it could be difficult to notice productively. I say, hey, Joe, what you want me to see? Is it this line? Is it this line? Which line you want me to see? But using simulation, we can, we can scaffold, okay? Then this is another example where I did with a chemistry teacher. She wanted something, so I helped her. So we scaffold where we actually make the, the we make the molecule uh, have a have a have a stronger outline to scaffold to make the student notice. Oh, this is their mistake. Uh, this is their this is their shortcoming. They didn't make four and four. You know, so we make all this design here, lah. Uh, personalization. This is an example where we I did with Tak Leong. We we thought and, and Su Kuang, We thought personalization was something uh, that we can do in SLS, but in physics education, the physics performance task was something that we thought was very has a very nice slant to personalization because we tell the student, okay, this is roughly what you need to do. But you go and decide what is the physics task you want to analyze. You go and do a video analysis. Then after 10 weeks, we come and discuss the physics. I think this is one of the examples I can recall uh, that talks about personalization. Uh, oh. Meta condition is thinking about thinking. We can we can later we can we can use ITT to talk about it and uh, learning together. Because learning fundamentally, I could not have learned so much. Uh, if I just sit down at my table and look at books, uh, I mean, all of us will agree, right? At some point, you need to talk to somebody, the knowledgeable other, maybe somebody also not so knowledgeable, but sometimes the bouncing of idea helps me to figure out, hey, I, oh, this is how you see it. Oh, then it strengthened, may not give me the correct answer, but at least I, I figured out some things along the way. Lah. Oh, okay. So this is the, this is the e-pedagogy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you an SLS lesson. Okay. Uh, Okay, the lesson is here, SLS lesson. Uh, okay, okay. Let me see. Uh, 
see if I can put the chat in or not. Okay, this is the SIS lesson. Okay, so in this SIS lesson, I designed a simulation. Okay, this is the same simulation. Typically, I, uh, I will tell students to launch in full screen, but we can put the instruction on the left and the right so the student can, can see. I mean, it's a bit small on my screen, but you can see that you can get the student to interact and they can read. Okay, so this is one of the design that we thought is useful. Then we can get students to draw because we want them to draw the, the G field. So we give them a, a template then they can go and draw the, the G field. So, of course, realizing that they can actually use the simulation to draw. Uh, then they can, they can scope. So, it's, it's something like that. Uh, a 1 over R square form. So, you want the student to draw. So, don't... Uh, so, this is one way we can get, get to use SLS to do the, so the performance. Uh, so, the student can draw, do the drawing. Then, after that, we can use uh, interactive thinking too. Okay? So, interactive thinking too is something like this. Uh, it has three tabs because I designed it to have three tabs. So the first tab I asked students to draw one time. Then after that, I draw, I asked them to draw for the other M2. Okay. Then eventually I get the student to draw the M1 and M2 combined together. Okay. I took, I cannot take credit for this design. Uh, the original design was by Jimmy in YJC because I worked with him as a collaborator in 2016 and all that. But I took the worksheet from him again. Then I, I re-put it back into SLS as a, as a, with my own remix. Ah, but the idea I took from Jimmy. Lah. Oh, okay. So I think what happened is at the end, when the student all key in all the answers, ah, they can actually go to this view all and then they can see. I, I don't want to uh, take up too much time, but basically you trust me. If you get students to use ITT, Interactive Thinking tool, they can see all the students, other students' responses. Maybe we are physics teachers uh, in MOE. I think at some point you may have played with this or some you may, may have heard of this from your colleagues. Uh. This, take it from me, uh, is a powerful design for sharing ideas. I heard from my colleagues, I said, oh, yeah, no big deal. Uh. But as I play with it, I realized actually there's a lot of uh, wonderful learning that can be achieved uh, by getting students to do this interactive thing too. Because there's no assessment. It, I just get the student to go and write their answer. Then they say, hey, how come this fella draw like this? How come another fella draw like that? And then I see, then I get to think, hey, how come my answer is correct or wrong? I think it's, it's fantastic as, as a tool for sharing ideas. Lah. So there's no marks, okay? Then of course, there'll be all this usual multiple choice. Uh, uh, then another one where I get students to predict the, the where is this neutral point? So the design just keep going. Lah. So I, I, I'm doing the design halfway, but I thought uh, it would be good to share with you some of the thinking behind how we can use simulations, which is an essential part of uh, blending the real equipment, which I, a lot of the participants already shared, you're using real equipment is fantastic. It, again, I like to say that my simulations, if, if, if you use my simulations, are meant to augment. We do not advocate throwing away the physics lab. What I'm doing is I'm just digitizing a copy that you can very easily replicate some of this physics experiment that you can do with the student. But it by no means it is a, a replacement. By no means it is to, it's no, by no means do I make any claims that it is superior. I am saying that it is a good way to blend the real with the virtual. So you have a real experiment. Probably we can have something that's similar in setup. We can have it in the virtual form, put it in SLS. The student do the real one in the, in the real classroom setting with you. In the SLS, they can also by some chance, if, they, if we happen to make one already, then we can put inside one. They can also manipulate it virtually to get the best of experience in the real world as well as a virtual, okay? So then the e-pedagogy come in where we talk about some of these key uh, key applications of technology. K they call it CAT. Lah. K -A -K -A -T. Uh, I think that is something that you will keep on hearing from your school leaders and, and all that. So it's good to familiarize yourself with this uh, CAT, key applications of technology <laughs> or e-pedagogy. So, uh, and then finally, I cement it with an example of an SLS lesson, which I do not just talk about the theory because I, I know theory very... It all sounds correct, but how does it look like? Show me. Okay, I show you SS lesson. <laughs> so it's in the link below. 
by no means is perfect. So that's why I, I come back to the to the point that I'm driving at. Uh. This lesson can be copied out to your to your own mind drive. Make the edits you want to see, be the change that you want to see in the physics lesson that I've I've uh, altered. Then you submit it back to SLS CG. I will look at it, I say okay, I will replace it. And then together we become co-authors of a better sim uh, a better lesson that has benefit of you as teachers on the ground and me being in HQ, uh, you know, doing some specialized work. <laughs> so I think this is a, a good way to collaborate. Uh, so with that, I think it's my time is up. Thank, Thank you, you so much so for much. hearing me yeah. out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lawrence, for sharing about you know e pedagogy and the use of SLS, you know, and uh, simulations to augment whatever that students are already doing in the lab, right? So this is definitely uh, very useful. And okay, at this point, I think in the chat, yes, there is a link being shared for the reflection questions for today. Understand that it is already uh, time, you know, I mean, like already past five slightly. So spare with us for a bit. Maybe I just need to borrow another two, three minutes of a time. So please access 